Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to the Lawrence Art Center. Thanks uh, to everyone here and uh, to everyone online that's uh, here for this presentation and performance today. Uh, today is uh, a presentation is um, a part of a, a bigger project, um, an exhibition called Ghosts of Segregation, which you all are hopefully have had a chance to see and spend some time with. Uh, it's up through December the 12th. Uh, it's a group of about 40 photographs. Um, so we've had many programs throughout the run of this show. It's been since late or middle, middle of August when this all began. Um, and so this is, we're coming up on the tail end of this project. And uh, so we're really excited to have this, uh, this Uh, Reckoning in Boston is a film, uh, and that will be a screening uh, live stream uh, and then a Q&A with the filmmakers. And you can find out all of that information at the Lawrence Art Center website. Uh, it'll tell you how to, to, to log on and, and participate. Uh, so please check that out. And then on December 6th at Liberty Hall at 7 p.m., the author Clint Smith will be here, and he'll be uh, giving a presentation. And that's a partnership with the Hall Center at the University of Kansas. And uh, so hopefully you all can make it out for that on December 6th, and then that's it. And then we, we wrap up this exhibit on the 12th of December. So we're gonna have two, uh, two a performer and, and a presenter today, and, uh, and then they're gonna talk about a collective that they're a part of, a part of called Black Lawrence. And at that time, we'll uh, open it up for discussion and back and forth if you all are interested whether you're online or here in person, uh, we'll have that opportunity um, at the end. So our first guest today is, to my mind, probably a Lawrence fixture in the music scene, uh, Mr. Barry Washboard Barnes. Uh, he's a published poet, performing artist, loop artist, and a professional washboard, washboard player. Barry plays washboard for Zydeco to go in Lawrence. And Uh, out of Kansas City. Anyway, please welcome Barry Barnes. Howdy. All right. What am I going to do first? Oh. Of course, um, Living in Lawrence, you got to hear some Langston Hughes, right? This poem is called Negro. It's written by Langston Hughes. Um, it was written at a time before blacks or African Americans could actually choose what they wanted to be called. For a long time, we were Negroes, and, and we were black. Now we're African American and black, but yeah, Langston Hughes knew what was up. Still hanging on me. <laughs> My mask. Wear your mask. Mississippi, Texas, and beyond, and today...
when company comes. But I laugh and I eat well and I grow stronger. Tomorrow, I will be at the table when company comes and nobody will dare say eat in the kitchen. Then, besides, they'll see how beautiful I am. To consider myself a performance artist. So I try to try to do everything. Because when you say you're a performance artist, you can like come up, come up to the stage and like just like open up a bunch of packages of pixie sticks and like dump them all over you. <laughs> Call it good. <laughs> Got to turn on all my robots. So yeah, this is this exhibit is called the was it the ghost of segregation? I grew up here in Lawrence, and uh, I at one time it was a whites only pool called the I think it was called the Jayhawk pool, but um, then when segregation became illegal, it was ingenious. Let's make this into a private club, and so that's what happened. So systemic racism or the the fact that I would sit on my porch and like all the kids I was sitting next to all your own white kids they'd walk by the house and like occasionally someone would be like yeah you can't go to the pool yeah so there's your critical race theory anyway <laughs> it's pretty critical to me um no it was I mean that's the way it was so you didn't lose any sleep over it you just dealt with it So this is making the sausage. So basically I'm gonna build a loop from scratch and hopefully it'll be something that I can recite poetry to. I can figure out how many pan phones. Brothers and sisters come together despite their health, despite the weather. They come from all walks of life, 
Tired of the hate, tired of the fight. You are my sister, you are my brother. I know just because the earth is a mother. We are connected in so many ways. To deny this will cause decay. Decay of the mind, decay of the body, decay of the soul, decay of the world as we know it today. You see, we are not different colors, we are different shades. A variation on the same theme. And this is why we celebrate, because there's only one race, the human race. Peace and love for all, forever. individual it is different yes i am talking about pain i am the beholder how we perceive it's not the same for you no it's not the same for me apathy hypocrisy selfishness and greed we're too busy feeding our own desires just let it bleed Screen just like we're about to dream, but we're not allowed to achieve with smoke and drink to an end. Just help prepare a broken home. Probably because they're too busy reaping a profit. Just like they've achieved their dreams and closed the door behind them. Corporate farms, government farms, national farms, international farms, industrial farms, atomic farms, whatever happened to the family farm, probably flew south too with the American dream. Oh well, we have our rights, let me read them to you. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain homeless. You have the right to remain unemployed. You have the right to remain uneducated. You have the right to remain intoxicated. You have the right to remain incarcerated. You have the right to remain unmasked. You have the right to remain unvaccinated. And you have the right to an attorney. Just dial one eight hundred attorney. You have a credit card number ready. Your psychics are waiting. You have the right to an attorney, and anything you say and do may be held against you in a court of law. In fact, they might even take it from you and beat you with it. Beat you with it. Beat you with it.
Let America be America again. Let it be the dream that it used to be. Let it be that fighter on the plate seeking a home where he himself can be free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream, the dream of strength. Let it be that great, strong land of love where never kings can not and tyrant scheme that any man be crushed by one above. It never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned. No false patriotic greed, but opportunity is real. Life is free. Equality is. Scars. I am the red man driven from the land. I'm the immigrant clutching the hope that I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog and mighty crush the weak. I am the young man full of hope and strength, tangled in an ancient English chain of profit, power, and gain. I've grabbed the land, I've grabbed the gold, I've grabbed the ways to satisfy a need, and work the man to take the pay of one man who got for one's own greed. Why, I am the farmer, thoughts me to the soil. I am the worker, sold to the machine. I am the Negro, servant to you all. I am the people, humble, hungry, living, hungry yet today, despite the dream, beating yet today. Oh, pioneer, I am the man who never got ahead. The poorest worker part of the years. Yet I'm the one who dreamt that basic dream in that old world while still a serpent kings. Who dreamt a dream that's so strong, so brave, so true, that even yet today it's finding daring saints in every brick and stone in every furrow of a turn. That's what's made America the land it has become. For I'm the man who circles only sees the searching for my man to be my home. For I'm the one who left dark Ireland shores, Poland's plains, England's, England's grassy leaves, torn from black Africa's strand. I came to build a home, the land of the free. The free? Who said the free? Not me. Surely not me. The millions are only today. The millions shot down when we strike. The millions who have nothing for their pain. For all the dreams we dreamt and all the songs we sung and all the hope we held, all the flags we hung, the millions. Whose faith in pain, whose hand is the founder, whose plan to reign, let's bring back that mighty dream again. Sure, call me any of the names you choose, whose full of freedom will not stain. From those who live like leeches on the people's lives, we must take back our land again, America. Oh, yes, I say it plain. America never was America to me, and I swear this oath, America will be. Out of the rack and ruin of our gangster death, the rape and rot of graft and stealth and lies, we, the people, must redeem the land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, the endless plains, all, all the stretch of these great green states, and make America again. Thanks, ladies. <laughs> I forgot I'm using a different mic, so I can't not I cannot loop this. Oh well, we'll do something else. <laughs> it was fun though. <laughs> Guess I could have just rocked out on that for a while. All right. Well, let's build another loop, and I'll shout some more poetry at you. What I'm doing here is I don't count very well, so there's a metronome inside here. <laughs>
feeling happy before the wedding, you will not be happy after the wedding. Time. Time have I killed? Oh, 
Awesome shows and hold on to your socks. Thanks. You say you almost did my job for me. Ah. Introducing our next our next presenter. Um, he does have a book that's in the back for sale, and I'm sure he'd be happy to chat with you after uh, after he's up here uh, to talk more about that book uh, and other projects that he, uh, he's working on. Uh, Ty Emery Spawn Ryan is uh, is Lawrence, Kansas's uh, 2016 Langston Hughes Poetry Award recipient and co-founder of the collaborative group Black, Black Literature and Arts Collective Kansas. He was the chief editor of Tendril Naropa University Journal of Diversity on Diversity, excuse me, self-published chapbook Ancient Writings of Dark Prophet, the Undisciplined Mystic and has published work in Spirit Rising, Young Quaker Voices, edited by Angela Count and Justice Calls, Sermons, Welcome, and Aff Affirmation, edited by Phil Snyder. Uh, the book that I believe is back there, uh, Beautiful Ash, it's Ash or Ashay? Ashay. thank you. Uh, Memoirs of a Sweet Black Boy and More is a book project by our next speaker, because he considers this time to be one of where black people are seeking continued liberation and has been exasperated by quarantines and loss of income that disproportionately affects black people. He wants it to be a project that provides financial security and incentive to other black artists. Please welcome Ty Emery Spawn Ryan. Uh, what's good, everybody? See you um, in person and also uh, all you people online. Um, welcome and Ashe. Um, so, again, my name is uh, Ty Amri Span Ryan. Uh, I'm going to be sharing with you from the book uh, Beautiful Ashe. Um, and uh, before I do so, though, I, I had a, an opportunity to walk around um, this exhibit and I, I just wanted to share a little bit about that experience with you. So I prepared a few words. First, um, I'd like to thank uh, Blanca and Ben for organizing this amazing event, um, and also for our videographer. Um, and I really hope each one of you get the chance to experience the exhibit. Um, when I looked around, I saw ancestors in, in every picture. Pictures as innocuous as segregated side windows and doors at eating establishments and as insidious as lynching trees 
and the bridge where Emmett Till's body was dumped. The pictures as old as slave auction sites and as new as the walls along the border. I think it's appropriate that this event is taking place the day after the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict and during the Ahmaud Arbery case. It is a reminder that while these things may seem far away, their ghosts are still here with us. This week I had the opportunity to watch the art documentary. I cried as they talked about the deaths that occurred in the river because children of color weren't allowed to use the public pool. It made me think of my own parents and able to use the pools in their hometowns. It reminded me that there is very little difference between racism in the North and the South. I'm a father and a teacher. And as a teacher, I tell my students that during Jim Crow, it wasn't just the black people who experienced racism and segregation. It was Asians, Native folks, Latin folks, and all people of color who suffered. As a father, I tell my children that there are ghosts, but their purpose is to guide and guard. But in truth, there are two kinds of ghosts, those that guide and guard, and those whose trauma and suffering prevented them from doing so. The Western view is that the latter should be exercised, but I'd like to offer another alternative. Perhaps instead of an exorcism that banishes, we enter into one that heals. May today's reading be a healing of those ghosts of racism still with us today. And may we begin with the African tradition of pouring libations in honor of those ancestors. This first poem is dedicated to all of my teachers and ancestors who are in the world beyond. We begin with a drinking gourd. To, to Mama Wata, the Iyami, the primordial mothers of creator, the red, black, green of Africa, the quiet warriors in swamps of Seminole, the sweet grass, the Gichi Gullah on islands of rice and cracks of whip, the Sarahs on Underground Railroad, the Irish Quakers with abolitionist maps, the preachers and poets, the singers and black banjo players, the Ida B. Wells, a man was lynched today. The Howard Thurmans in the silence of blackness and the disinherited black Jesus. To the gay commie Bayard Rustin, the full self Archie Lord, the face smashed but crown intact Fannie Lou Hamer, the children first Ella Baker, the spit talking Amiri Baraka, to the black Chinese giant Grace Lee Boggs, woman and man and neither, Carrie Edwards, no gender. Teacher of dread, Tequila Oliver, taking youth back to Africa, Malaika, and to the justice seer, Vincent Harding, I hear where my grandmother is from, I see her. I see you in the depths of the belly. I see you block. I see you cutting your hands on cotton. I see you take those whips like a good nigga. I see you hiding the names of our gods in our hearts, and writing the words of the drums in our songs. I see you drinking to forget the child sold down the river. I see you, Uncle Tommy, the hurt of your wife taken by Massa Knightley. I see you stealing literacy. I see you writing the map to freedom in blood. I see you sanctifying nature with your strange fruit. And to the people who think they white. I reverse engineered your dog whistle. Donald Trump doesn't care about white people. When my mama Gaia gets a fever, you will burn in the fire next time like the rest of us. Your ancestral savior, John Brown, knew that and went flame resistant. But you stand in picket lines for POTUS and tweet a petition. You excommunicate your grandmother on Facebook because she made the same choice you would have in her shoes. You speak with someone else's voice but neglect your own. You've left your ancestors in the old world and stole new ones which you promptly burned on magazines covers. You bury the magic of herbs and roots. Dig it up again and sell all your
card company that leased them to you in exchange for your slave ships and Amistad friendships like we did before the Irish were exploited for their desperation in a world built on hate so we can halt the machine of our inevitable demise. And to the people who think they black, I got my race car dog whistle. Let's go back to Africa again, where gods and goddesses look like us, dark and queer as hell. Let's go to the lynching tree and heal her roots. Let's shut up already and talk with drums again. Let's dial 1900 Save the Coon. Let's have gays celebrating some black folks other than MLK. This warrants fiery Kansas on Langston Hughes Day. We whisper rivers in the ears of our elders. Our words kiss black skin. On Tiger Dell Dell Day, we wear black gloves and speak only black love. We pour liquor to the martyrs of the cop's gun, erect monuments to black potential snuffed and writ we licked what was snuffed. Get licked, get licked. Ashe almighty, may the world get licked. I said, um, uh, I'm a middle school teacher in Topeka and also the father of two daughters, a uh, two-year-old and a five-year-old who maybe are watching at home right now, maybe not. Um, but um, being a parent, I'm always, and a teacher, I'm always wondering what, what do I need to share with my children and what, what, um, what's too much and what's not enough, right? And, um, and and then there are those times when I think about all the things I'd like to protect my children from, and I know that I can't. And so I wrote this poem, Things I Can't Tell My Daughters. When I was black, I had a tear that swept beneath the skirt of the ocean. It lays and rests with the souls of black folks who knew what survival might cost. When Brianna Taylor slept in dreams of a family, in arms of a lover, in shelter, in alarm, woke to bullet pounding info terror propaganda, whistleblower PD parties, black woman lost to the whims of a thirsty media demon fed with likes and sad faces and a people too tired and hungry to see. When black men search for birds, their phones should be fully charged and live camera capable. They should always beware of unknown white women with God complexes and should never attempt to correct them in any way, lest they end up like Christian Cooper, lest they want the noose. When we don't mourn, a cop kneels firmly on our neck and a no-knock carries us down the river to old Nassa's house where the sun don't shine and the bees don't buzz and ain't no way to know what it means to be black. So I don't know if you can tell this, but I used to be a high school pastor. <laughs> um, and as a pastor and as a poet, I was often told, you know, uh, what you said made me cry. And like sometimes people say it like, like I'm sorry. And, I'll, uh, and I'm like, actually, I'll, I kind of want you to cry. I don't, I don't, I don't feel bad making you cry. Um, I actually, um, I often cry when I write and when I read. So um, I, I oftentimes think about um, one of my uh, favorite was a, a, of the Tagara tribe in Western Africa, and he would talk about funerals, and at funerals, um, he would say that the funerals would go on for days, sometimes weeks, and everyone in the surrounding area would come to the funerals, and they would just weep and weep and weep, even if they didn't know the person who was being buried. Um, and because of that, they don't have a lot of stuck grief, and so I hope that I get some of that grief unstuck. And so. 
I welcome you if you have if you have tears to not to not hold them back. Um, this next poem um, was written uh, about Zikala uh, Shah, also known as Redbird, um, after I was studying a little bit of her story and came to understand that she was in boarding schools in Shawnee Mission, um, and that those boarding schools were run by Quakers, which are my ancestors, the same people who are known for abolishing slavery, helping to abolish slavery, and, uh, and uh, being conscientious objectors were also uh, some of the biggest proponents of Indian boarding schools, and so I reckon with that in my own, my own lineage. Red Bird. Face to the black sky of my mother, red as the day, red as the new sun, red for the sins of this land. Board me in your white schools for white gods and white ways. No good for my braids. They sit raw on your floors, then burned, unfit for a trophy. The weight of guilt and shame creating a stench. The mission in Shawnee, Kansas was always extermination by any means necessary. Our souls for your land, our boys and girls for your dream catchers, our buffalo for your art. I'll tell the story my grandmother told me. Once I was the son, but someone told me to kneel. Now I'm the watcher as my people die and I tell the tale while you deny. Zit Kalasha, standing on the rock, Quakers who fought in abolitionist circles, stealing my soul for their schools to be cleansed of red earth and made of plastics for their cupboards beneath the beds of their children, waiting the test of time. Without our hearts, this game ends. Without our mother's tongue, the earth will be forgotten. So we hold them somewhere they cannot go to use them when to live in this world can be no more. For our sins, we look into your hearts and find your torn braids signaling a cowardice placed on your soul with the stroke of a Western pin. The Quakers, those who would lock themselves on the wheels of the slave poachers who kissed my great grandmother Sarah with the tools to dig her way to freedom, also thought you a beast your skin a red to be bleached, your mother's tongue a danger to their god, so they thought to lock the doors to your ancestors in Shawnee Mission dungeons, the blood beneath the earth of Kansas's free state. When your eyes were opened in that field, you saw they lies in light. You told the tales to make us woke a F, but you woke too and saw the tubes used to distill the essence of your people, their dream catchers for the spirit of a small Indian boy who no longer wants to be Indian if it means a life without love. And so, to be whole, you gave up their privilege for your people, and in so doing, you sat in the heart as the body died around you. Wall in Brownsville, Texas, um, it inspired me to share this next poem um, that I wrote uh, on July 4th, um, thinking about uh, family separation policies. Flag of distress. What to a migrant child is July 4th? Mother, forgive us when we know exactly what we do. Take your darker children and lock them in dungeons of greed. Make mourners of their mothers, drown their fathers in rivers of freedom. Force 10 year olds to raise babies and deny them methods to heal. When you look at the trail that we've walked, 
awaken to the pain we have brought. The only logical solution is to repair legacies of despair. But there's a crown that sits on oppression, opium dens for hatred to incubate, soldiers manufacturing consent, and stars that blind with blockbusters. So what to an imprisoned migrant child is the 4th of July? It's not the rocket's red glare, torn from mama, not the flag of freedom, but the chain-linked fence, the toilet bowl drinking fountain. Not the rainbowed produce aisle, but the spoiled baloney. Not a day to spend with loved ones, but straw on a desert floor. We don't need another celebration. We need the cold shock of sobriety. Don't need to watch another show. Need to hear influenza cries for family. Don't need to read POTUS tweets. Need to pay the sins of our forefathers. Don't need infighting. Need solutions already. And when we feel that our problems are the worst, we need to remember that there's a child who followed a dream where they saw their father drown, where they can't soothe their mother's tears, and where men with guns keep them whispering, Mother. Um, so this next poem is, um, is a little reminder when we think all of these bad things are happening far away on the border or in other countries or down. S-O-N. September 2014, high school students from Free State vandalized the football field of Morris High School before an impending game. What they wrote in shaving cream. School of niggers. She say she don't need the heartache. Don't need to see your words scrawled on her face in the mirror. Say she built for more than Forgotten slumlord tours of her body, black and queer, silent and dangerous to touch, so she go for now, but lies like the fire next time. Her eyes cry, but her woke nose ain't nowhere to run if you face it and numb. So she let her heart open. When they deny Mike Brown body lay bruised and broken for our sins for four and a half hours, blood. Till the rips and tears are a song to freedom from a Babylonian distraction. After that, colorblind sights only remind of her mother moon face, micro lashes, and overseer report cards are translated to new trails through that under spirit training. She gon' catch it. And where she stand gon' be right where you left her in the fields sprayed with cotton school of niggers. But where she is is flown away. If you want her, then bow your head and admit her juju magic is why the snake ain't bite in the first place. America, descendant of slaves where masters ain't free and states claim John Brown, but he don't claim thee. Turn the light on, see the glorious dark for what it is. The only way to grow your soul is to plant it a shame. Racism no life give. I hope the water unleaded for all. Amen. You, we see you. Our hearts, we see you. Burn the chains we gave for you end up slave.
close with this poem. Um, this poem is dedicated uh, to the healing and the exorcism of the ghosts that bind um, the earth. I don't know if you can tell, but these uh, these beads I'm wearing have spiritual significance. Uh, it's part of my tradition um, as an Abolisha Ifa practitioner, um, which is a Western African religion in which we believe that everything, everything is endowed with a life, life-giving um, force called Ashe. Hence the title of my book, Beautiful Ashe. And so all, all things have life force. All things are alive. Um, and so I dedicated this poem to the earth, and throughout the poem you will hear, you might recognize uh, names that you're like, what's that? Or maybe you will recognize them. These are all names of different goddesses, and there's a reason why um, uh, we associate the goddess with the earth. Um, because in many, many traditions, the protectors of the earth are women. Thanks taking. Mini Muchoni versus the black snake. To the water protect. The genocidal cries rise against the chains on their remains. Tatanka Iantanka rides his buffalo rumble in the distance, waiting for their day of vengeance. Sixty million blood. They killed 60 million buffalo blood. Just 40 million less than Ma'afa, black blood in the bottom of the sea. So many Uchoni speak, water protectors speak against the snake's water cannon. La Madre cradles the suffering, but for those who cause suffering, she holds death in her hands. The slow flow through umbilical kind. Need I remind, if all are one, that we pump out our ancestors to burn under the sun to get our lattes a little faster. Water, protect us from our self-guzzling ways. Many we choni, never be thirsty. To the fire protectors, stomach churns of Pele. Don't die of hypothermia burned into the pavement of your mounds and shopping malls made shell mound. Ceremonious eyes. And they came, shrouded in animal skins, signing apocalyptic like cocoa. Let the truth in, peep the lies out, study their features in the bucket before you, then scroll their deeds so our prophecies can be freed. To the nature protectors, my colleague says the holy dark is moving too, and we were not ready. May the Athen Kuchia be quick, Brujas an opening, Nana Buruku to our true egg, a rebirth with streams in hand, mountain in mind, trees in hair, hurricanes in eyes. This ending will be a beginning, morsels of our oppression ground to breath, most foul in smog factories, most cancer epigenetically, filtered lead-filled springs will burn from the faucet, all that destroys us is transmutated in our intentions, and you are again the naked, the sacred, community decolonized with the vine. To the mineral protectors, Medusa's might through blight and retribution, barbarians wanting trophies of the impossible woman power, the stone people always, only we know at whose expense, Griots tell tales, cellular memory, post-traumatic empire syndrome, severed roots, smothered branches, GMO histories, to organic mysteries, to rites of passage destinies, to rent red tent cities, matriarchal blood warriors, Boudicca, five gender god talkers, trans cinder, 15-year-old prophets, Malala, Iami, Primordial grandmother, ruler, 
decomposing to be member again. And to the earth protectors, Shahina, fill your lungs to walk the Guadalupana from East Oakland to the deserts of stolen Mexico to embrace two little girls in a minute man dungeon to silence their claims on seven generations of trees renewed in blood bonds, the washed sack of Yimoja to cradle her arms where any warrior would be how to die and rise, rise and die and sit beneath Kuan Yin to learn of love until the world ends. Beautiful Ashe. Thank you. Barry, um, I am a member of Black Lawrence. Um, I can't even remember when I joined <laughs> because I'm old and crazy. But um, Ty is, uh, so I was considered um, Alex the leader, yes, and you the co leader. And and I would just show up when they would have events and they would let me participate with them. <laughs> Here, you, you, you can do this better than me. <laughs> Yeah, so so I'm. You're right about Alex. Alex is way better at remembering like dates and stuff like that. I'm not. I'm not that good at that. I think. I think we started in 2017, um, and it kind of it kind of began from it, it sprang out of the uh, the Links and Hughes um, awards, which was in the room right over there. And I, I would go back and I would meet an artist and I'm like, hey. It's nice to meet you. And then as as we develop relationships, we're like, well, there's there's a lot of us in Lawrence, and I didn't realize that. And so we should start doing so going on four years now. Yeah, that seems right. Yeah. Yeah, I think and and right around this time too, um, I think our first, you know, really big public show was uh, a Kwanzaa show, which we're hoping to do again this year. Um, so, so stay stay tuned for that, and it'll, it'll probably be uh, it'll probably be online because it'll be cold and not a lot of people like to gather right now. Um, so uh, and um, and it's it's such a it's such an open and inclusive group. Um, we're always looking for for more members, um, and we don't really care about the medium. We love. All, all mediums of artwork. Um, you know, we have photographers in our group. Um, we, we probably could use some more sculptors and painters. Um, so um, they let me in the group. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's really cool the way they do it. Um, like they have a um, message board, or and um, someone will go, "Hey, I'm putting together a show, and anybody want to do it?" And people go, "I can or I can't." And Sometimes you'll get five people. Sometimes you might get one. <laughs> That's, and it's you know, just under the guise of Black Lawrence. Tell them, tell them what. Collective of Kansas. Um, and, and actually my book, um, I think of it as a Black, Black Lawrence project, um, even though I, I wrote the poetry in there, um, Alex. Um, was my editor, and then uh, Mercedes Lucero um, was the uh, did the layout and the design um, of the cover, um, and also uh, the pages and the book. And then um, Leah Evans, a photographer, um, she did uh, a lot of the photography on my website, and also did the the photo on the on the front cover as well. Um, and all of that uh, came from the uh, the Sawyer seminar, uh, gave us a grant, and so I was able to pay all of those artists uh, to help work on that book. And so um, 
I think a big part of what we try to do is support black artists as much as possible because um, even, even though we're a collective, it can be extremely isolated to be, to be black and also to be an artist in, in Kansas. So um, we try to support each other as much as possible. And if we can support each other financially, uh, we try to do that as well. So we do have PayPal um, that we, you know, we, we get support from that. But um, our, our real Um, through, through our heart. So, yeah. Any questions? <laughs> well, if anybody does have questions and they're too bashful, uh, maybe, maybe uh, come chat with them afterwards. Thank you. Oh, we wanted to ask. All right. Uh, the bullet. <laughs> Dark Prophet and Undisciplined Mystic, where can I get it? <laughs> Uh, it's probably somewhere in my attic. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was like my 31st birthday. I was born on the 31st of March. So I was like, oh, it's my golden birthday. I should make a chat book. So I just put a bunch of my poems together and like got one of my good friends to make the do some cover art and I, I just printed it at Kinko's. And so there's probably some copies laying around somewhere. <laughs> I have a book somewhere too. So. <laughs> Maybe you'll pull it out for Kwanzaa. Yeah, I'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Thank you both so much. Uh, thank thank you. you. Thanks for having us.